Hello and welcome back to the next session of business intelligence and analytics course. We are moving to a very important topic uh, titled data management and we are going to intently spend uh, some time in understanding the technology for managing data. Uh, managing uh, here means managing uh, large volumes of data. It is not small amount of data that we deal with in data mining and business intelligence analytics, but it is large volumes of data. We have seen the definition itself uh, carries the term large data volumes and hence it is very important for us to have uh, technology to manage it. Okay. It is difficult to man manually manage large volumes of data. Okay. That is where technology comes uh, for Hel helping us. Okay. So, uh, data management is an integral part of business intelligence and analytics. Uh, last class when we saw the architecture of BI, we found that the bottom layer is nothing but data or raw data. Okay. It is through business transactions that uh, raw data enters an enterprise. It is through that raw data that behavior enters a business enterprise. Now, that is an alternate statement. Behavior in the sense the stakeholders of a business are interacting with the business through information systems like the ERP, like the CRM, like the SCM and so on. So, there are different enterprise software systems today. Okay. Uh, so, when people or stakeholders like customers use enterprise systems for uh, transactions, okay, business transactions, the transaction data enters a database okay. and therefore, the nature of interaction of a customer with the business is captured in the form of a transaction record. Okay. We found that in the case of telecom, it is a call detail data or CDD or sometimes also known as CDR called detail record CDR or CDD. Okay. So, they actually, uh, so the databases capture the customer interactions or stakeholder interactions including employee, it could be other stakeholders that data uh, gets captured in databases. Okay. So, that is oftentimes the integral part of an organization today because uh, enterprise systems like ERP comes with the database or it requires a database okay? and that is a major advantage of course for going for um, enterprise system software. Okay? But from that, how do you move forward uh, and um, um, keep your data or store your data um, in a way that is available and useful or relevant for analytics? is another question. It is not about simply st storing uh, transaction records, but it is about um, filtering and uh, bringing relevant data oftentimes in an aggregate level, not at a individual level to a different data store for the purpose of analytics. Okay? So, we saw that architecture uh, now, uh, previously. Okay? Today um, and uh, one more session or we will be spending on databases, okay? how databases manage data and specifically we will look at how relational databases uh, manage data or what is this um, whole uh, thing called relational database management system or RDBMS which is widely and very extensively used in industry thanks to enterprise software like ERP because they all come with a standard database uh, of relational uh, form of databases and therefore, they are very prevalent and uh, they will be prevalent at least for some more time as we see it because enterprise software continue to be used by organizations. Okay. There are other types of data as we saw yesterday or in the previous session that uh, also um, are used for analytics like the big data 
IoT data, social media data and so on. So, today there is a data lake concept which actually brings multiple formats of data together into a lake and then that data is stored, transmitted, transformed and analyzed okay, for the purpose of insights okay, or that is the big data analytics or data science. Okay, so, all this is about data. So, let us uh, in today's session look closely at the database format of data structure or structured data and uh, then go on to understand how data stored uh, in a database can be uh, accessed okay, or can be selected uh, using certain commands okay, and then be structured or reported etc. Okay. So, for that there is a specific language called structured query language. So, we will be having a more detailed demonstration to you about database particularly relational database and how to use SQL to query the databases and what are the limitations of simple queries when it comes to business questions. When business ask more complex questions, simple queries will not be enough. There will be multi-dimensional queries. So, that will take us to the next topic of data management and data presentation using uh, online analytical processing or OLAP. Okay. So, we will see these topics one by one. So, predominantly we are dwelling at the data level and also when we talk about an SQL or OLAP essentially from an analytic lens we are looking at descriptive data analysis, okay. descriptive data analytics. Okay. So, uh, let us move on to understand these topics. So, um, here um, let me be very clear I am talking about data management at a enterprise level at an organizational level okay, where an organization may have a centralized data center or it may be following a cloud uh, service. So, wherein the data is managed by a cloud service provider, but there is a specific um, data uh, center and database uh, that is um, separately available for an organization. Okay. So, there are um, two approaches one is classical and other is modern and the postmodern or current approach to data management is you know um, big data which does not follow a structured uh, database system like the relational database ok that I would that is not mentioned here, but I would call that as a more postmodern uh, or current. Uh, form of data management, okay, but that is not dealt with in this course um, except for one session which is on text mining, okay. So, um, uh, traditionally in, a, in the classical form of data management, data capture and data storage, data transmission all involved file systems, okay. Uh, we discussed this while discussing the evolution of information systems in organizations starting with uh, legacy systems or uh, centralized information systems. Okay. So, in which the legacy systems did not have a database. Okay. Legacy systems for business transactions will produce um, files. Okay. So, each transaction record is a file or a flat file as it is often called in COBOL. So, the flat files were stored uh, as records of historic data in file format okay. and uh, that was not as uh, easy and as structured as a relational database. And in the mid 80s came the relational database and Oracle as a company uh, was founded we saw that and uh, so, that there started the era of relational form of databases which as I, I told you already is the most prevalent form of uh, data storage, uh, data not data storage, data management. So, here we need to differentiate between uh, physical data storage for which there are storage devices. Okay. So, the 
cylinder um, symbol that is shown here stands for disk storage. That is a physical storage medium where data is actually stored okay, in the form of zeros and ones. But when we talk about database, we are not talking about physical storage. We are talking about database management. Okay? Database management means how data is uh, stored, retrieved and updated, deleted from a data storage medium. Data is finally stored here, but how do we actually manage this input and output, okay? inputting and outputting from the storage medium. So, managing that data transactions is what a database management system or DBMS do. And when the DBMS is relational, okay, we are going to see what is relational database uh, soon in another session, but that is known as RDBMS. Okay. So, essentially RDBMS is a complex software, essentially it is a software. When you install a MySQL or um, a, any DBMS system in your uh, server or in your laptop, you are basically installing a very complex software okay. and that can be configured to manage data. Okay, that can be configured to manage data. So, data may be stored, still stored in your own device, but what you actually do is this database management. Okay, so um, and you can see database management uh, involves uh, a software for um, managing creation, updation, deletion, and uh, uh, access of data. And it also involves people, okay. You, you need a database administrator, there are database users and so on. So, it is a system, we call it an information system. It is a database, it is an information system which um, captures, uh, stores and make relevant data available when users ask for it using a language. So, users, uh, these interactions with the database is managed by a specific language known as structured query language okay this is structured query language okay that is a language users okay be it administrator be it um, business users they would be using in the absence of a um, interface you could use an sql structured query language to interact with the uh, database system okay so that is what is known as db MS, okay. DBMS is what is depicted here. Now, uh, as I said, here I am talking about enterprise data management. Okay, um, In books related to data mining analytics, you will also hear about data management in a different context as to how algorithms manage data. Data mining algorithms oftentimes deal with very large volumes of data. Okay, So, in that case, managing this large volume of data for the purpose of processing or running the algorithm in itself is a challenge. Okay? So, there are different techniques developed for data management within a algorithm or within a tool okay? and uh, that is a separate topic in itself and that is not what I am talking about here. So, you will hear about scalable algorithms and so on. Okay? Scalable algorithms actually represents algorithms that can actually manage large volumes of data using certain sampling techniques. Okay? That is a separate topic. Okay? So, I, uh, since you will be reading textbooks or reading a lot of resources and materials, uh, you will hear about the term data management in different contexts. So, you should be aware in what context this particular term is used. Okay? Here, I am talking about data management uh, in the context of organizations. Okay? So, relational form of uh, data management is what we are going to focus on in this course as it is very prevalent and it is very uh, useful and very structured. Okay? That is the structured approach to data management. There is unstructured data which is about big data which will be uh, managed separately like uh, Hadoop and uh, 
related technologies are used for managing unstructured data which I am not dealing with in this uh, course. Okay. okay, then there are a host of other techniques other than relational databases known as non-relational and uh, if you have to add a three third today that will be the big data management. Okay. So, Hadoop and other technologies are examples okay, for that. Okay. So, let us move on. Um, now, since we are talking about uh, databases, it is important to know why you need database. Okay. Why can't data be managed manually? Of course, you have obvious answers when the volumes are large, manual processing is not easy. Okay. and it is not efficient. Okay. It takes consumes long time and it could lead to errors and so on. Uh, but why can't data be managed um, or stored using spreadsheets like the Microsoft Excel or G sheet or you have spreadsheet technologies available today and uh, that is also very structured. Okay. So, a spreadsheet is structured into worksheets. Okay. So, you can have a worksheet for one worksheet for one category of data, next safe for customers, uh, second worksheet for another category of data say for employees, third worksheet for another category of data say items and so on. So, it is um, actually a spreadsheet is a structured way of storing and managing data and we also know uh, as users of uh, spreadsheets that you can embed formulas in spreadsheets. You can filter data, you know filtering and sorting is a very powerful technique in spreadsheets to almost similar to the SQL queries where you can actually filter the data that you want from a large set of raw data that is stored. Okay. So, when a spreadsheet has all these features which a database typically has and you do not have to write any code, you see uh, filtering is very intuitive, right? You can actually apply filters on each column, okay, the way you want and you can specify those conditions. It is very much menu driven. You do not have to learn an SQL language and this complex table structure, etc. In uh, not very complex, but it is it requires some technical knowledge. Okay. Uh, so, if you use spreadsheets okay, and why spreadsheets, why not spreadsheets for large volumes of data, why database okay? and uh, that is a question that is answered in this particular slide. So, the first topic is actually about integrity. Okay. Integrity of uh, data. Okay, so, what is data integrity? Okay. Data integrity uh, is about the credibility of the data. It is related to the credibility of the data. It is related to the accuracy of the data and so on. So, um, and so data integrity to be ensured, there are two aspects to data integrity. One is entity integrity, other is referential integrity. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in this context, I uh, refer to the Aadhaar project of the government of India. Okay. Why did government initiate a large project, arguably the largest database in the world, uh, arguably the largest platform in the world, which uh, perhaps has um, almost 95% uh, of the citizen data, citizens identity data has been captured and stored in the uh, Aadhaar database okay, or what is called as the Aadhaar registry. Okay. So, that particular database carries uh, wealth of fundamental data okay, uh, about uh, citizens of India. So, why was it required? Okay. Uh, if you ask that question, it is about uh, a specific aspect of data which is the need to uniquely identify each record. Okay. Uh, what is this problem of unique identification? You know, uh, the Aadhaar is also known as UID, okay. Unique identification, okay. And an organization was created for that unique identification, Authority of India, okay. And uh, so, this was created because 
there was no unique identification of citizens prior to that. Okay? They were, uh, in other words, multiple IDs for the same person. And then what happens? Okay? If government has to deliver its services to citizens, okay? um, for the government, there is only one citizen. Okay? And that citizen should be receiving certain, uh, certain services. Okay? It could be ration, it could be your cooking gas. Okay, and there is certain quota for each, each individual, and the uh, individual should receive only that quota, and uh, the quota should go to only that individual, not somebody else. Okay, so a uniquely identified individual can be provided with this uh, services which is relevant and which is a right of that uh, citizen or individual. But suppose there are many IDs for the same person. Okay. Then what happens? Okay. Then what happens is um, so the same service uh, two people can claim. Okay, that becomes a conflict. Okay, this is a data integrity problem because a uh, person is not uniquely identified. Okay, and a uh, th think of a voter ID for example. Okay, so a person generates. A voter ID in Karnataka and also in Kerala and also in Madhya Pradesh. Okay, you can go and vote in three places. Although you are not supposed to do that, you have three IDs. Okay, you are not uniquely identified. Okay, so practically, when you implement databases, okay, what you solve is a problem called identification or a need for unique identification. What does the other database do? It creates a unique ID, and that is the only ID that government will use in delivering its important services. Of course, there is a conflict of this identity database versus uh, data privacy and some of you may be aware of this. So, uh, let me not enter there, but government is capturing only basic level data, okay, uh, what do you call uh, foundational data, you can call it. And beyond that, um, it is not captured, so it, it serves certain purpose. Okay, and that purpose is to identify individual for the purpose of governments, government services. And the same identity database can be used for uh, other services like telecom by, um, by telecom service providers. But, um, you know, in, today we know that it cannot be mandated. But this is a very, very um, reliable or credible form of ensuring identity. So, entity integrity is about giving a unique ID and that unique ID in database terms is known as the primary key. So, what is uh, author ID? It is a primary key for an individual in database terms. And once there is a primary key, all other fields related to you get related to the primary key okay so all all in database we say all uh, fields or all attributes should be fully related to the primary key okay and that is how a individual's record is created and there cannot be multiple records uh, for the same individual because the key is the same a primary key is unique and it is not um, it is not distinct or there are no different primary keys for the same person. So, therefore, the uniqueness of records are maintained. Okay, That is known as entity integrity. There is also a concept of referential integrity which is related to data integrity. That is, um, that is um, in order to illustrate it with an example, suppose um, a person retires from an organization. Okay. So, employee X retires from an organization, okay. but employee X's uh, records would be removed or deleted from the employee database. Okay. So, the HR department does it very promptly, the record is deleted. Okay. And suppose um, each department maintains a separate data store, maybe it is not database, it could be file system or spreadsheets or whatever. Okay, So, it is assume it is a small or medium organization, they do not have uh, you know the concept of uh, central database, but it is uh, only about individual systems. Okay, So, HR deleted, but operations department did not delete or marketing department did not delete. Okay, So, for them the employee is still an employee. 
so you see the kind of conflict and confusion comes so uh, because the when a record was deleted in one place that deletion did not reflect in the uh, record of another system where the same person or the same um, um, yeah the same object was present okay so this problem is addressed uh, through referential to ensure referential integrity database systems um, enforce a rule that when a record is deleted in a master table it will reflect in all the records uh, where the primary key uh, using a uh, primary key or the primary key occurs uh, let me reword it if a particular record is deleted in a master table um, and that particular record has a primary key so then any table that refers to that master table the corresponding records uh, of the reference table will also be deleted or will also be deleted once the master record is deleted okay so there is referential integrity so the other departments don't have to individually do it it, it is if it is reflected in a master table okay that is the idea of referential integrity okay so uh, so two aspects of data integrity are enforced by databases entity integrity and referential integrity and these two together is known as data integrity this is an important feature of uh, databases okay and se secondly of course uh, the other important purpose of databases is to resolve redundancy and inconsistency okay so um, in the absence of say unique identification or a primary key there as we said there could be multiple records about the uh, same person and um, also um, the same data may have to repeat again and again when you do not structure the data using keys. Okay? This is something that uh, we uh, I will show you in the in next slide as to how redundancy can be reduced when you use a database system like the relational database okay and uh, of course the third and fourth advantages you can see the ease of access um, and uh, where applications uh, different applications can be written to access the same database okay so um, so you can see that in enterprise systems there can be an scm there can be an erp there can be a, a CRM, etc., which connects to the same database. An enterprise database is central, common. Okay. So you have a common uh, data definition. For example, customer is defined uh, as a customer um, in the same way an ERP defines it, an SCM defines it, and CRM defines it. And a customer is uniquely identified, say, by a customer ID. So, how customer will be identified is commonly defined for all departments, all systems. Okay, So, that brings a, some sort of sanity to the entire enterprise in terms of the data language they speak. And database is common as, I, as you can see. So, you can write different applications but uh, but it the data can be stored in the same database okay so database becomes a common asset K database becomes a sort of integrating entity for the entire enterprise okay so these are um, you know philosophical or conceptual um, schemas that is used when implementing enterprise systems okay so the main uh, advantage there is that database becomes a common asset okay so that is uh, other advantages okay so instead of using very very different data storage techniques in different departments or uh, units okay so but let's try to understand how uh, databases uh, 
um, are actually developed and implemented. The implementation part I am not covering in this session, but I would um, give you some idea about how databases are developed so that you are able to think how data gets structured in databases. Because when we use the term structured approach to data storage, uh, you must uh, understand what is the uh, sort of design thinking that or how, what is the design approach that goes into developing the database. So, in this slide you first see database has uh, two levels, one is a logical level, other is the physical level and I think I talked about it previously. The logical level is where you develop a management system for managing data. Okay, So, it involves um, data modeling. I will show you what is data modeling in the next slide as to how you develop a database structure and then you use a language to sort of um, update or delete or retrieve data from the databases that is for the sort of transactions with the database and then of course you need to define uh, who can access and what is the access right of each user and uh, security levels etc all that is part of the maintenance of the database so you 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 can see that there is a database profession called database administrators profession okay and uh, this is the physical level which is the physical storage uh, the device at the device level okay so this is not something that we are dealing with we are looking at here in terms of database uh, management 